Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my happy place, also known as my sewing room. And today is Friday, July 2nd, 2021. And this episode is all about my red sampler quilt along. So we started this quilt along in April. I started it on my blog. I did film about, about it here and there on my channel a little bit, but because we are nearing the end, it will end July 30th, then I kind of wanted to devote one episode, you know, just about the quilt along and show you um, how I border the blocks, explain the setting I'm using again, talk about, you know, different things. And then I've also have some new blocks to show you that are, that I sewed to go on the back of the quilt, which is the label for my spelling bee book. And I'll show you that at the end of the video. Now, when I tell you that this quilt along, you know, goes for four months, that just means my schedule. It took, you know, taking me four months to show all of the blocks that I did on my blog. That doesn't mean that you have to keep up with me. If you like that schedule, you can. But I don't ever want anybody to think that they're behind or something. It will remain on my blog. Uh, you know, I am sewing from my books and you know they're always evergreen and remain and so you can always jump on the bandwagon and decide to start now or next week or you know don't think that you have to keep up because um it's not a race it's most important you know that you enjoy it and this may be a quilt that you want to make all summer long so what um what i'm doing is for this year's so long that i do with my books um, what I do is I often like to use my books in a different way than maybe you have originally thought about using them or the way that they were originally presented in the book with all of the patterns. I mean, believe me, I pack my books full of different patterns and different ideas, but sometimes I like to just change things up a little bit and, um, use the books again and, you know, use them in a different way. So that's what this quilt along is doing for this year. So, you know, um, if you've been following that, that I do like to do mix and match settings in my books, meaning I have six and 12 inch blocks in these books that we are using for this quilt along. And that's what we're using for the quilt is six and 12 inch blocks. And in all of these books, I have different settings that you can use six and 12 inch blocks. So um, a lot of times you can use books from both Farm Girl Vintage books. And for instance, you could make this quilt, but some of the blocks from the first Farm Girl Vintage book, you could pop in here. And some of them can be from, you know, Spelling Bee or the few six and 12 that I have in there and Vintage Christmas. For instance, um, last year I did I did a quilt along with my Vintage Christmas book and I called it the Be Patriotic Quilt Along. And what I did was I took the traditional, like the star blocks, not the picture blocks from this book, but like the star blocks and made them into patriotic colors. And we had a patriotic quilt out of the Vintage Christmas book because I like you to be able to think outside of the box and again, use my books for different things so that they, you know, so that you uh, don't just make a few quilts in my book and then move on. I kind of like them to be a staple in your sewing room. I know they are in mine and I reuse them all the time. Even though I'm the one who authored the books, I still go to them and, you know, design things, uh, different projects and quilts from them all the time. And so let's move on to, I'm gonna show you the blocks that I have made so far. So I just finished posting week 12 on my blog on Mondays. I always post the blocks that I made for that week and show you which book they're made out of and um, if they're a six or a 12 inch block and that kind of thing. So I just posted week 12 on last Monday. Today is Friday, so that means this Monday there will be uh, week 13 where I'll be showing new blocks. But I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna grab my schedule here and just kind of show you the blocks that I have done so far and what they're called and from what, what books. So you can see this one is obviously a six inch block. This is called Taffy and it's from Vintage Christmas. 
And these are, these are the three blocks that I did for week one. This one is called Quilting Day, the six inch block, and it is um, from Farm Girl Vintage too. This one right here, here, you know what? I'm gonna take this stack off right here so I can show you the blocks individually so they're not all curved like that. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so this is the Sunny Sunflower, and this is from my first Farm Girl Vintage book. And then moving into week two, this is Reindeer Hooves, and it's from Vintage Christmas. This one is Lazy Daisy. It's from Farm Girl Vintage 2. And then the last one that we did for week two is the Summer Star. And that is from my first Farm Girl Vintage book. All right, so that's the week two. Week three, we have Starry Nights from Farm Girl Vintage 2. And we have this six inch block is called New Baby Quilt. And that's from Farm Girl Vintage 2. And then we've got the Cozy Star. And that's from Vintage Christmas. Okay, so week four, we have the Churn Dash from my first Farm Girl Vintage. We have Vintage Pinwheel from Vintage Christmas. And from Great Granny Squared, we have my Great Granny blog here. All right, so that was, let's see, that was week four. So now let's move on to week five. Let me grab this pile. Okay, here's Peas and Carrots. That's from my first Farm Girl Vintage book. And this is my Granny Star Block. Now, this is a tutorial that I did here on my channel, which is another time I talked about my red sampler. Um, this is my Granny Star Block that I designed years ago when I did my Great Granny Squared book that I taught in my retreats and workshops, and I thought it would be really fun in this quilt, so I did a tutorial for you during that week. And then for the 12 inch block for that week, we did um, the evening star block and that's from Farm Girl Vintage 2. And then for week six, we did the cross stitch block from Farm Girl Vintage 2. And we did city sidewalks from Vintage Christmas. And then for the 12 inch block that week, here's the butter churn block for my uh, original Farm Girl Vintage book. And then um, for week seven, I did something a little bit different and we did just three six inch blocks. So I did just one corner of the 12 inch block of quilting day. So it ended up being a six inch block and then just one corner of the Starry Nights. So that ended up being a six inch block and then just one corner of the cross stitch block. So that's what we did for that, that week. And then week eight, we did Winter Star. And that is from my first Farm Girl Vintage book. And then we've got Corn and Tomatoes for my first Farm Girl Vintage book. And then we also did this heart and it's from the inside the mitten on my Vintage Christmas book. So we used the cutting in the 12 inch block, but just did the heart and it ended up being a six inch block. And I really wanted to add this heart to the sampler quilt. Okay, so next we have, for week nine, this is Glisten from Vintage Christmas. 
and then we've got the maple leaf block. This, this maple leaf block is from Farm Girl Vintage 2. I have a scrappy maple leaf in Farm Girl Vintage 1 that's different than this, but I love the traditional maple leaf block, so I, I needed to add that in here. Trying to just do traditional blocks in this quilt, very few pitcher blocks, if any. Just really trying to keep it like a traditional red sampler. Okay, so this is Kitchen Window, and that's for my first Farm Girl Vintage book. And that was week nine. So week 10 for the 12 inch block, we did Glimmer right here. And then we did the Pinwheels block for my first vintage Christmas book. I mean, excuse me, my first Farm Girl vintage. And this next one, we did the Mama block from Great Granny Squared. And so, let's see. I know this is the chicken foot block. Let me turn my page so I don't, of my notes, so I don't say the wrong thing, the wrong block name. Okay, this is the 12 inch chicken foot block and it's from my original Farm Girl Vintage book. And then we did just one pinwheel from the pinwheels block in my original uh, Farm Girl Vintage book so that we, we, using the 12 inch cutting so that just one segment was a six inch block. And I, I love adding this in here because I want some, some blocks that have a lot smaller pieces and some blocks that have larger pieces and that's what makes the quilt interesting, I think. And then this is Farm Fresh Flower and it's also from my first Farm Girl Vintage book. And so that's week 11. And so week 12 that we're doing right now that I just told you that I just posted on Monday, I am doing 12, um, I'm doing four 12 inch blocks because, because um, the setting that I'm using, I need 20 12 inch blocks and I need 36 inch blocks. And so I kind of wanted to just concentrate on the 12 inch blocks and get those finished. Now this is um, my wool star block and it's in vintage Christmas. This is my stained glass block and it's in vintage Christmas and I used a different print for each quarter square triangle. We also did Mama's applique block. I think it's kind of fun because, you know, if you follow me, you know I love applique as well as I love piecing, but I think it's kind of fun to kind of make a piece block that is a little bit of a nod to applique is kind of set out in quadrants like that, like a traditional applique block. So that's why this is called Mama's applique. And then we've got the cool threads from my first Farm Girl Vintage book. So obviously that's a traditional schools, but I named it Cool Threads. All right, so that's what I have posted so far on my blog, but I thought that if I have these sewn, I might as well show you what I've got going on. Because of course I'm working a couple of weeks, two or three weeks ahead of you um, because I need to so that, you know, it's all planned. I know what I'm doing. Sometimes I have to pre-post on my blog if I'm going out of town and things like that. And I'd like to get this quilted and all ready for, you know, like July 30th so I could show it to you all quilted and everything by the time the end of the quilt along comes. So on Monday, I'll be showing you on my blog um, this basket. This is called the Egg Basket Block and it's from Farm Girl Vintage 1, my first Farm Girl Vintage book. And you know, it's a basket. I know it's sort of a picture block, but it is a basket block, which I think are traditional and things that you may see in a red sampler. And so that's, those are the kind of blocks that I've included. This is Tumbleweed, and it's from my first Farm Girl Vintage book as well. And then here we've got 
Holly and Ivy. And that's from Vintage Christmas. And this print, this is kind of fun because um, I have some pretty yardage of my stitch fabric. So that comes in a couple of weeks. So I'm pretty excited about that. But I, because I have pretty yardage of it, I can use a few of the red pieces and some of my blocks here and there. So that's where this print comes from. So again, this is Holly and Ivy from Vintage Christmas. And then, so that's Monday, but I've even um, skipped ahead a little bit to this one. This is my, um, this will be for week 14, so this will post July 12th. So you guys are really getting some sneak peeks here. And um, this is the Sisters Quilt Block. Oh, sorry, this is the fourth one. This is still going to be for July 5th for week 13. Okay, so this is Sister's Quilt Block, and this is from Farm Girl Vintage 2. I forgot that I was doing four blocks then as well. So this is the fourth one. This is also a print for my stitch collection right here coming up, and I used I paired that up with a print for my prim. And then, of course, the background I used here is my little chicken tracks from Farm Girl Vintage. And I talk all about the fabrics that I'm using, all the different backgrounds, in my last uh, video on this channel when I talked about this and also that's all explained on my blog and so of course I will leave a link in this video description of week one of my red sampler quilt along and within that week one you will see all of the different posts that you know you need to see and if you, when you go to week 12, I'll leave a link to my latest one. I'll leave a link also to week 12. And that way you can scroll down to the bottom of that post and I actually show you the blocks and then give you a link to, you know, week one, week two, week three, week four, so that that's an easy way to find all of them. So I'll make sure I leave that link as well to make it easier. Okay, so week um, 14, July 12th, the 12 inch block we have here is the small town block and this is from um, Farm Girl Vintage 2 and I thought it was really fun to just pick fabric for one house and then repeat them. So this is what I'm kind of talking about. Sometimes I design blocks that have four of the same thing in them and if you're doing the 12 inch block like this you know that one quarter of this is a six inch block. So you have the opportunity to mix and match and do that. You could do one big block like this and then you could also do a six inch block with just one of these if you wanted to. So um, I thought it was fun to put my penmanship fabric here in the windows and you know, just kind of play around with all the different shades of red. And I just tried to make sure that there was enough contrast between these two fabrics, these two fabrics, and these two so that they all show differently so that you could see each element in each block. And that's what I tried to do with all of them. Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the setting that I'm using. Now again, that doesn't mean that you have to use that setting. If you're only comfortable in making 12 inch blocks, that's great. I have lots of settings for just 12 inch blocks in all of these books that you could just use 12 inch blocks and use those settings. If you are a person who is a diehard six inch block maker, and I know there's many of you out there, then I have lots of settings for just six inch blocks, you know, that you could do just six inch blocks. So, um, you know, feel free to do what whatever you'd like I just am showing you what I'm doing. I know a lot of people are doing the exact same setting that I am, and so I wanted to show you um, how I'm doing the borders because I did tell you that this quilt takes borders for each block. When I say borders, I'm not talking about the outside quilt border. I'm talking about each individual block has a border that go around goes around it. Now, I like to do that um, in this setting, I designed this quilt just for that because sometimes when you're piecing a block, I mean, no one's ever perfect, right? You're never gonna get it exactly 12 and a half or six and a half. Like, I shouldn't say never, sometimes that happens, but most of the time it's gonna be like 
off a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch on this side, and maybe all three of these sides are good, or you know, vice versa. It just kind of um, happens. That's just the way it is. And so when you go to put your quilt together, sashings a lot of times will save you from that. You can measure your block and say, okay, I know that this is an eighth of an inch short on this side, so I can kind of make up for that when I'm sewing the sashing on. Well, what I, the reason I designed this setting like this is so that when you have all different sized blocks and some blocks that have uh, very few fabrics in and some blocks that have a lot of fabrics in, that kind of gives, you know, you have a tendency for your blocks to be just off by an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch here and there. Um, so by adding individual borders around each block and then trimming them up to that, that means once you've trimmed that block up, let me show you the next one. Once you've trimmed that block up, that means that it doesn't really matter if this snowflake block, which is what we'll be doing in week 14, I went ahead and trimmed this up already. And I always, for this size, it in the book it calls for, you need to trim this up to, it should measure seven and a half inches. So here's my trim at rulers. This is probably gonna glare, so sorry for that. If that really glares, is that bad? Should I tilt it a nope, little bit? That's perfect, actually. Okay. And so, see how nice that is to, to have that ruler so that you can use up these lines and line everything up. See how I, I put lines on here specifically this way so that you can line up all of the quadrants in your block before you go and trim it up. Now in the book for the six inch blocks, I have you cut one inch strips and border around the outside. And then, you know, by the time you sew them up, then that ends up being a seven and a half inch block. Now, if you're worried that your blocks are a little bit off, all you have to do is go ahead and instead of cutting this these one inches wide, you may want to cut them one and a half inches wide, sew them all around so that you have a little bit more room. And then when you lay this out to trim it up, then it doesn't matter if your blocks were just a little bit short because now they're going to measure seven and a half inches by using a seven and a half inch square ruler. So I hope I explained that well enough that you understand what I mean that using doing this way by doing little borders and maybe doing them a little bit wider than I called for in the book and then trimming them down helps you to um, make sure all of your blocks are exactly the size that they need to be when you go to sew them together. So this will be unfinished seven and a half. And so then these will be finished at um, unfinished 14 and a half, finished at 14. And these will finish at seven. So that means seven and seven make 14. And so that's how you can put two blocks this way or two blocks this way. And you can see in the book setting, I have two six inch blocks, then a 12, then a 12, two six inch, then a 12, a 12, two six inch, and then I kind of offset it in the next row. And so this quilt is sewn together by rows this way, not this way, okay? And so also about the bordering fabric for this, I have, these are just three of the fabrics that I'm choosing in backgrounds, but um, I decided that I'm gonna use the same background to border my six inch blocks that I used for the background within that individual block. So this I used my clover for my B background, and my red clover, and so I went ahead and did that and then trimmed it up. But for the 12 inch blocks, I decided it would be kind of fun to use these two prints, which I used here and there throughout some of my blocks, but I didn't use these a lot because I love these, but they're busy. And so I only used them in places where they would really shine or if it was like a bigger, a larger area, or let's see, let me pull this block up for instance, like in here. See, I thought that was fun to show that different texture in that and mix up the two backgrounds. So I thought it would be really fun to go ahead and mix up the two backgrounds to border 
my 12 inch blocks. Now that doesn't mean I'm gonna do that for every 12 inch block, but I just thought it would really be fun to pull these two prints in more. And I only wanna do that for the 12 inch because that this ends up being an inch on the outside so it shows that text print. And I happen to like my text print going this way, the penmanship. I keep calling it text, but it's actually called penmanship. I like it going this way, straight. And then I thought it was really fun to put my honeycomb or chicken wire on the top and bottom. And so what I did with that is the exact same thing that I did with the other block, which is the six inch block, but I used my 14 and a half inch ruler. So it's the same way. These are, this is the trim it ruler. These are just trim it rulers that I'm using, meaning I just use these to square up my blocks, trim up my blocks, use them in applique all the time and in piecing to trim them up after they're sewn. I just like to be able to have these lines this way to center everything before I trim up the block. And I don't use these for, you know, like cutting out pieces for my quilt because yes, these are inch increments in here. I don't know if you can see that, how I'm here. Let me put it on here. Okay, so yeah, these are inch increments in here and then the dotted lines are half inch, but around here is a quarter inch. And that shows you what your block is going to finish after you've taken your quarter inch seam allowance, what it's gonna look like finished on the inside. So that's what I use these for. I have these in sizes from two and a half clear up to 20 and a half, and they're very handy. I use them all the time. And um, so that's what I did for this one. So that's what I'll be doing for all the 12 inch blocks. And I did the same thing for the 12 inch blocks, meaning I cut the, I, in the book I have you cut these strips one and a half inches wide and then sew them on here, which would give you a 14 and a half inch block. And that's great if you wanna do it that way. If you feel like your block is maybe a little bit small or a little bit short, this gives you the perfect opportunity to cut these strips maybe two inches wide or two and a quarter inches wide and then take the ruler and trim them down. And that makes the inside of this block float within these borders and it doesn't matter if this was off just a little bit because the true measurement is now 14 and a half inches which is what you need to sew it into the quilt and it's really nice for when you have points that you think oh no if I take a quarter inch seam allowance on that maybe I'm going to cut it off well this way you can really kind of take a smaller seam allowance if you need to knowing that you're going to trim it up afterwards so I hope that's not confusing. I hope that makes sense. And I just wanted to tell you that that's how I'm doing it for the setting in this book. Now, if you're not adding, if you're using a setting like this that doesn't have, um, you know, individual borders that you trim up to, then I still just use my 12 and a half inch like this and just put it on my block and just make sure everything's squared up and trimmed right before I sew it into the quilt. Okay, so that's that segment about the borders. Now I wanna move on to my book Spelling Bee. So we have not used this as of yet. We have used these four books for all of the blocks and that's what we're using. But now we're gonna use Spelling Bee, which I did tell you in the very beginning that I will be using several blocks from this book for my label. I often like to do a pieced label. I always do a label, a unique label for all of my quilts for my sew alongs. And so the first thing I did was make a 12 inch, the sewing machine block. So here's the sewing machine block here in six inch. These are all six inch blocks in this quilt. But again, I have six inch all of these picture blocks, either six inch or 12 inch that you can make. And then each letter, I have uppercase and lowercase letters, all in either six or 12 inch. So this is not a 12 inch and this is a six inch. These are both six inch blocks. This is the uppercase, lowercase, and you can do that same thing in 12 inch. And so that's why I love this book spelling bee. There's so many things that you can do with this. Um, let me show you some pictures in the back, meaning I do individual quilts. I like join the two blocks together and made several quilts from that. This is my little mason jar 
block and then I put the flower block on top of it. So those are two blocks. You can do that in either the six inches sizes. So this would be six by 12 or you could do it in 12 inch size. So it would be 12 by 24. And so I have lots of different settings in here. And these are four of the blocks and I've spelled out home. This is my globe block and you can do that in six or 12. So there's just, there's a lot of different things that you can do, you know, with my mix and match settings here, as well as making my flashcards, what I'm calling these flashcards. And I keep these in the vintage bins here so that I can put on, here's my mantle in my front room downstairs. And I like to change out the words that I have hanging on my clothesline across the mantle. And, I have it in several places of my home. So I like to just be able to spell out whatever I want, people's names and, you know, anything I want to say. And so speaking of people's names, that's what I decided was an obvious thing to do, which I often use my spelling bee book to spell out my name for labels. And so I'm using the sewing machine block. And then let me grab this off. And I'll show you each letter that I did. So obviously, I just spelled out my name. Now, so here's the 12 inch L. Here's the 12 inch lowercase O. So there, that's the uppercase L and that's the lowercase O in 12 inch. Here's the lowercase r. And then here is the lowercase i. And I thought this was perfect to fussy cut this out of my Farm Girl Vintage text print. I thought that was fun. So there's that one. And then again, for my last name, there's the uppercase h lowercase o. I could have done it all in uppercase letters, but I thought it would just be kind of fun. Now the L, you simply just do a piece of fabric. There's no white around it because when you go to put, put it together, you'll put sashing in between. See, like that. And so that would be the LT. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. I'm going to grab this bowl of fabric. But first, let me show you I'm going to grab this bowl of fabric that I've been using and show you kind of what it would look like spaced apart. But so I did this for the year too. So I've got 20. And then let me move those two. And 12. So yes, I also have numbers in the book. So I have... Um, let me just open this one more time so you can see. For those of you who may not have, I don't know, what is this little, I doodled in that book somehow. These are backwards. Just so you know. Oh, 2012. <laughs> 2021, not 2012. I forgot what year we were in. <laughs> Thanks, Cass. See, this is why I have Cassidy filming for me so she keeps me straight. <laughs> no, I don't want to go back to 2012. Okay, so this is the inside of my um, spelling bee book. So this is the table of contents. So yeah, I have the uppercase letter blocks, the lowercase case letter blocks, I have all number blocks, and I have punctuation blocks, all of these punctuation blocks in here. And you can see that I used some of them in the bottom of the quilt here. So you really can spell out what you want. And then I have all of these picture blocks. And all of these come in six, and 12 inch size as well. And then here's quilts that I have and mini quilts. So this is pretty packed with stuff. And um, so you can choose to just do your initials, your whole name, you could, you could really go crazy and spell out the red sampler quilt and everything. But I thought for me, I'm going to put it in a row. Let me grab that bowl of fabric that I said so I can Kind of show you because I haven't sewn these together yet. But I typically, when I'm using 12 inch blocks, will cut like a one and a half inch strips in between for them to go. So, meaning, um, you know, they'll always be 12 and a half inches tall. 
because that's what size blocks I'm using. But I typically cut one and a half. Okay, I'm gonna go backwards with this. Just see, I don't know how far over you can see. Cass, show me how far I can put this L. That's good. I mean this way. Yep, you're good. Okay, can I go any farther? Okay, and so this is what it will look like. You know, this is about a one inch right there in between. Okay, thanks. There's my extra hands going up there. <laughs> and where's that eye? You can't even see over this far, but maybe I'll slide over. But anyway, that kind of typically will look like, see, can you kind of see mm -hmm. that? What it's going to look like sewn together. So basically, I'm just going to cut these strips one and a half inches by 12 and a half inches tall and then just piece them together and then put it on the outside. And so that's, and then I'm going to put, um, I'm just going to keep going all along the width of the quilt because I want it to be long. I'm going to put Lori and then I'm going to put Holt obviously after that here. Might as well lay that out and look at some different letters and if you think that that space too far apart then you know you can always just cut them one inches so that they'd be finished about half inches like that so so see that's where that L comes in right there is you just that's what the difference is when you put the sashing in between so I'll put Lori Holt, and now I can either put those on top of each other, meaning I can put Lori and then Holt like this, and then bring over the sewing machine. Let's see, put that on a different, bring over the sewing machine and put that next to it or underneath it, and then put the 2021 you know, coming out this way. There's all different kinds of ways that you can arrange it, depending on how big your name is, how much you want to spell out. You literally can just do your initials too. I could have just done L period H. I do have uh, in the punctuation blocks, I do have a period. So you could just put L and then H and the year and you know, whatever you wanted to do. And you can add more picture blocks in if you want. I just, thought for sure and maybe you know when I decide to lay it out maybe I'll throw in another picture block um it'd be fun to you know do this apple or you know the car or just something maybe that means something to you or another block from any of the other blocks but um books but um I just really wanted to do the sewing machine just to you know signify that it was a quilt along and that I was quilting along with all of you and it's been so much fun and we're nearing the end, but we're not near the end yet. We're getting there. And let's see, was there anything else that I wanted to talk to you about? I think that's everything that I have so far for the red sampler. And hopefully at the end of the month, it will uh, all be quilted and I can hang it up on my wall here in my studio and show it to you during one of my videos and take pictures. Of course, I'll do that on my blog. I'll show that on my blog when it's all finished. And so I sure hope you've enjoyed your time spent with me chatting all about my red sampler quilt today. And thank you so much for all of your kind comments, all of your likes, and to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. I so appreciate that. And um, I try real hard to continue to just have Cass come over once a week and film the things that I'm doing in my studio and hopefully that's content that you enjoy on my channel. It's just kind of like a day in the life of, of you know, being my bonnet here in the studio and, and what I'm up to and what I'm doing. And thank you so much for sharing in that with me and I will be back next week with another video and I'll chat with you later. Okay, before I go, I forgot to tell you something that I wanted to show you about in this book because I wanted to let you know that usually for the cover quilts of my book, I only do one quilt with that setting. But for this book, I love this setting so much that I did a couple more quilts using this setting. So here's, well, let me show you the 
So for instance, you know, there's the whole cover quilt right there. And in here, it shows you on page 138, right here, is the instructions. I'll just hurry and flip through it without. So that shows you how to put the quilt together. But on this page is what I wanted to show you right here, that here is the original sampler quilt. They all, all of these settings is the, all of this setting is the exact same amount of 12 inch blocks, which is 20, 12 inch blocks and 36 inch blocks. This one I called October Skies Quilt and I just took blocks within this book that are fall themed. Now, in my, in this book, I'm gonna grab this, I have several fall themed blocks too. So you could take this book and grab the fall themed blocks out of here and put them in here as well. But that's really fun because then you can take this setting and make it into the theme that you would like. So this one's fall and this one is the beekeeper's garden quilt. And I did 12 inch of my beehive block and then I did my honeybee block in six inch, like flying all around the hives and then put flowers all in between. And for my one of my workshops that I did in Arizona, I did another quilt where I took um, my rooster, my rise and shine rooster from this book and my mama hen and baby chick from this book and put that together in a quilt using this setting as well. And so Cassidy put together a slideshow of those four quilts, this one and the chicken and rooster one, so that you can kind of get an idea. And then some of the blocks that I used to go in here, you know, not all of them, just a few. And she put together a slideshow that lasts, I don't know, a couple minutes. And um, so you can kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about, how the quilt looks totally different when you're putting different blocks in, but using the same setting. Okay, chat with you later.